I told you I'm on your side. Go ahead, search the place. I'll wait down here. When you're done, you can honor our arrangement and share your findings with me. Or not. It's your call, Mr. Blacksad. I'll make sure you're suitably compensated. Colbert! Wilson! Bobby seems like a nice kid, but I... I barely know him. Hmm. A woman's fragrance. Almost angelical. I'm not sure how Yale's love of pickles will help me crack the case, but it's good to know. The worst thing about O'Leary's boys dropping by isn't the beating, but the fact that I can't tell what's theirs and what's Yale's. Doesn't seem like the best food for a boxer. Then again, it could be your classic bookie thug lunch. century French fables. Mayor must be one boring old lady. Judging by the general state of the apartment, they were leading a quiet life. So, you like your mob stories, don't you, Bobby? So, you like your mob stories, don't you, Bobby? Seems like Bobby inherited something more than boxing skills from his father, besides the tendency to vanish into thin air, of course. Nice chain. Why would you want such a big closet for so few clothes? Unless someone emptied it recently. Copy one of three. Do you know any of his relatives? Is his father ever, ever, Avenarius? Avenarius? The boxer poet? Didn't he disappear 20 years ago? Recently, but why? What does Sweet Mary have to do with Yale, the murder suspect? When I last
left, I told O'Leary I hadn't found a thing. The minute I was alone, I left for Mary's. But before all that, I took a small parting gift for her. I've never trusted angels. Mr. Black's hat? What a... Surprise. When they fall, they turn into demons. Joey told me he was going to spend the afternoon painting the gym and that Bobby would be fixing something up on the roof. So, after I found the body and called the police, I went to Bobby's place, but he wasn't there. So you knew that Yale was with Dunn when he died, and yet you told no one? I guess I just forgot. Everything is so... confusing. I'm sorry, Mr. Blacksad. Don't be. I'm here to figure it all out. Do you realize you might be protecting a murderer? What? I'm not protecting anybody. Okay. I think it's time to set things straight. I knew you were cheating on Dunn with Yale. Or was it the other way around? No! How can you even think of something like that? How can you convince me otherwise? I found a picture at Yale's apartment. It's you and him on a roller coaster. Care to explain, Miss Purnell? I'm not white, Mr. Black said. What? Seven of my great-grandparents were white. The eighth was black. According to law, I'm a black citizen, even if my skin says the contrary. Do you know what that means when you're born in North Arlington, Alabama? Segregated schools and a worse education for colored children. We even have different water fountains, for God's sake. The separate but equal doctrine and all that that garbage. And all the lies. That's why I moved here. No one knows what color my great-grandparents were. I'm black too, and I don't hide it. Well, at least you're a man. In any case, what's that have to do with Bobby Yale? He's my nephew, Mr. Black said. Joe and I first started taking care of poor Bobby when my sister died. That was when he was almost 15. The three of us went on that trip to Luna Park. So this is where Joe Dunn comes in. Bobby was the only one who knew about me and Joey. We were afraid that someone would use my past to ruin his career. It's not the first time I hear that story. You should have told me this sooner. I've been hiding it all my life. I'm sorry. TV and radio all in one. Where will these mad times lead us? Mary smells like... Actually, the whole room smells like a pie fresh out of the oven. So I can't identify any other fragrances. Fresh out of the oven, the whole room smells like pie. (laughs) 
That cherry pie smells so good. I'm starting to get hungry. Thanks. I pulled it out of the oven right before you arrived. Oh, where are my manners? I'm the worst hostess in the world. Let me go get a knife from the kitchen. And you must be thirsty. Uh, let me see, OJ, coffee? OJ is fine, thanks. She's wearing the same clothes in both pictures, so she's probably telling the truth. That's some beautiful artwork you got there. You should open a bakery and sell these pies. <laughs> Thanks. Joey used to say the same thing. Are you sure you don't know where your nephew is? I've looked everywhere. He's nowhere to be found. Don't worry. I'll find him. Thank you. Your secret is safe with me. Thanks. It means a lot to me. About Sonia Dunn and the ring, I managed to hide the truth from her. I appreciate it, but at the same time... What? No, nothing. Maybe... maybe she has a right to know. Now that there's almost no pie left, the scent has also disappeared. Interesting. Now Mary smells like a huge dog. Mary, when are you going to stop lying? I know your nephew is here. I can smell him. What? No. I already told you I don't know where he is. Look, I understand why you're protecting him, but it's in his best interest to end this hide-and-seek. You can search the whole house if you want. Go ahead. He's not here. Wait a minute. She's not the one who smells like that. That's where Bobby Yale's scent is coming from. So, that's why you were sitting there. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Could you step aside so I can check, please? Uh, please go. Mary, for Christ's sake, put that knife down, would you? Leave or I'll... Mary, please, calm down. I mean it! I don't want to hurt you! Leave me alone! Bobby!
I'm on your side, Bobby. But I'm not on yours! Uh, 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 Do as I say. Go on, call an ambulance. Do it now. In the face of a heart attack, there's two things you can't forget. One, stay calm. Two, one chest compression per second. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. <gasps> Oh, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Thank you. I had lots of reasons to consider this a great day. I had investigated a suicide case. I had discovered that, in truth, we were dealing with a murder. I had found and captured the prime suspect. And I had saved a life. And yet, everything in me screamed that something was going wrong. Terribly wrong. Promise me Promise you me. won't take the law into your own hands. I'd like to think we're not just vigilantes. What the hell? Bang, bang, bang! A fair amount of violence, extortion, and casualty. I hate detectives. Bang, bang, bang! You're dead to me, Cash. That you, Smirnoff? You seem agitated. Nightmare? <sighs> yeah, I have a lot of those. Yeah, that makes two of us. Anyway, why don't you go home? In his current condition, Yale's not going anywhere. Besides, we'll take it from here. Thanks. I think I need to get some sleep. Yep, that much is clear. As for what happened yesterday, you promised me you wouldn't intervene. Bobby Yale attacked me. I had to do something. If you had warned me, maybe we could have avoided his assault. Anyway, what's done, is done. When, when exactly did you realize that he killed Dunn? Out of sheer curiosity, I'm a cop after all.
To be honest, I'm not so sure Yale killed anyone. How about the motive? Any ideas? I know Dunn wanted to call the fight off after something Yale did, but I still don't know what. In any case, hopefully Yale will tell us more. Would you let me ask him some questions when he wakes up? I know you will, with or without my permission, so I'd rather not feel betrayed. In exchange, drop by the station when you can. Your investigation could really help my men. Who, by the way, must be waiting for me to interrogate Mary Purnell? Boy, she was hard to pry from Yale's side. She's been through a lot in the past days. Be nice to her. Of course. In spite of it all, we're not just vigilantes. And as for you, go get some rest. God knows you need it. Tell the nurses to look at that face of yours. You look like a film detective in his last scene. I'm afraid this film isn't over yet. For your sake, I hope you're wrong. You're in charge now, officer. Okay. I'll send you relief in six hours. Understood? Doctor. Who are... Oh, detective. Congratulations. You fared pretty well against that kid. Better than most would have. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. Well, I always land on my feet. We, as a society, simply don't trust reptiles. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is our extended belief that there's logic to that distrust. That it's natural and well-founded. How's Yale? Is he awake? Oh yeah! Go check on him before he falls asleep again. Although, try not to bother him with too many questions. What's his current condition? Um, it's too soon to tell. He did have a heart attack, after all. Go away. I don't want to see you. The doctor told me to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying but it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd think he's lying. But that's not the case. He's clenching his fist. A sign of contained anger. Clenched fist. Fast heart rate. Fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... I saved your life, son. Maybe my aunt feels gratitude. I certainly don't. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. Why did you kill Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. Dunn was too short to hang himself with that rope. So, it's true? He was murdered. I know Dunn threatened to call off the fight, 
Why? How do you know that? I'm a detective. That was his anger talking. He never really meant it. That doesn't matter. Why was he so mad at you? What did you do? Nothing. Joe thought that I wasn't training hard enough. That I was going to lose. All right. Let's just say that I... I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted and who also happens to have a mo- I... I don't know. What about Frank Cassidy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status that Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. Poor Cassidy. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to... Jake was the army. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. What about Sonia Dunn? Sonia? I doubt it. She's odd. But she's his daughter. I've seen worse, believe me. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, uh... uh you know, my father disappeared when I was six, right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later, he still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, you're risking your life to find his murderer. Thanks. You're welcome. The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. say a lot about what's going on inside a person. Is that eye movement normal? He seems restless. Should I tell someone? See, there's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. I have nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh. 
Good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know and, and, and for bringing him in. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but I need to take a look at his medical report. I'll take a pack of Morley's, please. Honey, get me a pack of Morley's for Mr. Handsome. Yale's medical report is right there. Mind if I take a look? Hmm, no, I don't think so, Hanson. What if you show me Yale's report and I buy you dinner? You're handsome, all right, but I'm not stupid. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12.30 surgery. In four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask who's calling, please? Uh... 
Sherry, this is Dr. Tobel. We have to reschedule the 1230 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, tell them it's a matter of life or death. Understood? A matter of life and death, a matter of life and death. You've got to be kidding me. something that you have. Oh. Only if you guess why I'm giving it to you. You want to help me solve a criminal investigation. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back... it say here? Ah, oh, you know doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey, no means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that- There you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, hi, Phil. This is my assistant, Jerry. Assistant? How so? She's helping me with the investigation. Between you and me, and all due respect, miss, but aren't we taking this woman's liberation a little too far? All right, go ahead. I guess it's her business after all. Your assistant? <laughs> you think I'd make a good detective? You want it in? You got in. Don't complain. True. Thanks. Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. <laughs> 